Oh man, there's a lot of comments already. Welcome to the Sam Home Sailing live stream from Norway. We're in Haugesund and I sailed across the North Sea from Shetland uh, about a week, week ago. And we, we, I went to Bergen first and then, uh, and then here. So we'll go outside and get a look around. We're, we're here in the, uh, flip the camera. In the guest marina. And I sailed in over there. And I got some, some stuff at the stores. And that's a bridge over here and another sailboat. And we got our Norwegian courtesy flag out. And pretty cool little harbor in here. Um, I'm gonna go back inside because it's kind of chilly and rainy out here. Norway's been pretty cool so far. I like that they've they're over COVID and you don't have to wear masks anywhere. Um, it, the temperature is in the the 50s and occasionally getting into the 40s now um, in the evenings. Um, what else is going on? It rains. It's rained every day I've been here for the past uh, week, so it's very rainy. But I've, I did a little bit of hiking so far, and I've met, met a bunch of cool Norwegian folks that have um, uh, kept me fed, and uh, I gotta try I got the official dish of Nor Norway the other day. It was like this lamb or mutton. It was really good with cabbage. Um, okay, I'm gonna start looking at the questions. It's just bear with me, see what we got. Um, oh, just a lot of people saying hi, hello, everybody. Maybe we got people from Japan, Germany, USA, Michigan, Cape Cod, Trollheim, um, Vancouver. Let's see, we have any questions to talk about. Um, that the temperature actually isn't, isn't too bad yet. But I want to start working my way south. I don't really want to be sailing too much in the winter. Okay, here's a good question. How much did the Caledonian Canal cost? I'm going to go over that in my next video. Um, going through the, the Caledonian Canal. I think that's going to be a cool one. I've got uh, a lot of time lapses of the boat going up and uh, talk about, you know, how you go through it. It cost me 180 um, British pounds to go through and that was, um, and that, that seven day permit also includes the, the docking along the way, which seems like a pretty reasonable price. And it came with showers and bathrooms too. So someone asked me, how was my crossing to Norway? And my crossing to Norway was something I was a little bit, uh, worried about because the, the North Sea supposedly can have pretty uncomfortable waves. Uh, and the day before I left, there was 60 knots of wind, so we had some pretty, pretty good swell left over from that. Uh, but the, the crossing actually was was not too bad. It, we actually got becalmed for a little bit, and it was annoying because there was so much swell. Uh, so the, the crossing took me a little over two days just because I, I drifted. Um, but then my the uh, you know, that video will be coming up a little bit later. But my batteries died, so then I had to like just sail in and. We really don't get any sun here because it rains all the time. So I'm getting like, I don't know, like 200 watt hours a day, uh, or maybe maybe like 400 watt hours a day if the sun comes up a little bit. And it's not been enough to keep my batteries topped off. So I'm having to use the uh, the motor a little bit. Um, and luckily, one of my new Norwegian friends hooked me up with a, a European battery charger, so I can charge when I'm at the marinas. And they got a bunch of Good marinas here. Uh, let's see. Someone asked about the biggest waves I sailed in. Well, I don't know. Probably on some of the Atlantic or Pacific crossings are the biggest, but 
I think the North Sea's giving them a run for their money yesterday, sailing down from um, Bergen, and there were some waves close to 20 feet, and they were breaking over the back of the boat, got pooped half a dozen times, uh, a lot of water coming over the, the, the back. They were very, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the, it was some of the worst following seas I've ever been in, and probably 30 knots of wind. Luckily, I didn't have to, to put up with her too long because I just I was only going uh, for 40 miles. Uh, someone asked if I will meet up with MBJS, and I'm planning to meet up with him this evening. Um, he's somewhere around here. We've been talking back and forth through emails. Uh, I really uh, admire what that guy does, uh, sailing way far north up here, out of season. Um, that, that would be Eric by the way. I'm sure a lot of you guys subscribe to him. If you haven't, check out um, NBJS Sailing Eric. Uh, some badass videos he's got. Um, let's see what else we got. Am I going to winter in Norway? The plan for me to winter is to, right now, I think it's still to go down to Sweden. I need to double check with my contact down there, but I think there's a slip waiting for me or a dry dock, I'm not sure. Um, I'll put the boat out of the water for the winter there. And someone mentions that beer is expensive in Bergen, and I would have to agree. All the alcohol is pretty expensive, and beer is kind of it's kind of crazy to pay for 40 kroners for a beer at the supermarket. <laughs> um, I live in my... Okay, what else we got? Someone asked if I plan to go south before the weather gets too cold. Well, a little bit south, but not very far south. I'm just going to haul the boat out of the water, put it in a slip for the winter. Um, who are the friendliest people you've come across? I'm mean, very much everywhere I go. People have been pretty friendly. Um, I think uh, Ireland, Scotland, and Norway have been the most recent, and everybody's been friendly there. Um, oh, where did the, the comments go? How do I see them? Comments? Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, here they go. They came back. Uh, Oh, where am I going in Sweden? I think it's a little bit north of uh, Gothenburg. And, and I, so then after that, the plan is to sail uh, along around Europe down to the Mediterranean. And it'll stop in maybe Denmark and Holland and Spain and Portugal and France and, and then go and do some of the Mediterranean stuff. That would be next year. Uh, someone asked what the brand of bike I use. So that is the... Da, da, da. Uh, let me flip this around. It's a giant, is the brand, and it's a folding bike. And I don't know if it's any good. It seems it seems to work okay for me, I guess. It's cheap. Um, I think there's a da, da, some, there's like a one that's supposed to be better for working on, in, like, has more stainless steel parts for taking on boats or something. Uh, Got someone watching from Arkansas. Hello. Someone asked, "How's the boat holding up?" It's holding up pretty good. Uh, when I when we put back we put these uh, the berths back together, uh, we didn't use all the screws because it seemed excessive. And the, but there was a reason why all the furniture was held together with so many screws, and that's because uh, it creaks horribly <laughs> in the sea state. Uh, so the boat makes a lot of very annoying noises now. But I think it's. You know, structurally, it's fine, and the Dodger's holding up pretty good. It's got a few cracks in the paint where the wood's kind of, you know, swelled up and stuff, uh, but nothing, nothing to be concerned about too much. Let's see, what do we got? Will I be at that Bat Annapolis boat show? I don't think so. Um, we got a twenty dollar donation. Thanks for the bottle of <laughs> Aquavit. Yeah, okay. Uh. How about a catamaran? If someone wants to, to buy me a catamaran, a sailing catamaran, I take it. So catamaran sponsors out there. Um, I won't turn that down. Okay, have you ever had a moment? Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, someone 
asked me about Sven's workshop, and I want, I'm planning to go try to visit him if I can this year after I get to Sweden. I think maybe I'll see, see if I can take the train over there, because I'll be on the west coast, and I think he's on the east coast. Uh, we'll have to figure that out when I get there. Uh, Hike from Cape Cod. Uh, had any success fishing? Let's see. I mean, on the Atlantic crossing, I caught some fish. I caught a um, a fish out of uh, oh shoot, just out of the Caledonian Canal when I was sailing on the in the east coast of uh, Scotland. I caught a uh, what's that one they have? Not not herring. Um, uh, mac mackerel. I caught a mackerel. They're pretty easy to catch though, apparently. Nice, nicer portion size than nice, nice like single portion fish, like the, the, uh, the tunas I caught would just like have so much, so much fish to have to, to freeze and, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, how long have you been to keep a pickle? Someone asked about my drone. It's the DJI Mavic Mini, and I got some really cool drone shots in my, in my last. Last video, that's where I went to, um, I think the last one I was on the, in the castle. Sometimes I use the, the drone. So this, it's this guy. It folds up. And it makes some pretty good pictures. But it doesn't like very much wind. I think if I got another one, I'm gonna get, uh, like a used or an old, like, a. Uh, DJI Phantom because they have a nice handle that's easier for catching and they can I think that's what Eric's using I'll ask him about it but I think they can fly in more wind um because he's he does those in a lot of uh a lot of wind so thank you for the the contributions everybody I uh, really appreciate those that, that's kind of what funds my stay in all these marinas and I do these videos let's see so I'm asked if I use dried foods. I haven't really got too much into the dried food. Um, I have some canned foods. I've been that kind of works well for my 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 stomach. Uh, the comments went away again. How do I make those come back? No, I just click on it. No. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, I think there's something else to talk about. Let me go back outside for a second. I want the comments to come back so I can... Oh, there we go. Can you make alcohol like yourself, like Delos? Uh, yeah. Used to brew beer and do some whiskey and things with distilling. Does YouTube support sailing well enough money-wise? Uh, yeah, it it's makes enough money to live on. Almost as much as I used to make at Disney, so pretty good. Congratulations on making it in Norway, thank you. Someone asked for a detailed video on my solar and electrical system. Sure. I've got two solar panels that are, um, I don't know, maybe it says on here. The solar panels are 175 watts each. And then I've got a 200 amp hour battery and I've got a solar MPPT solar charge controller. Um, I think it's 100-50, whatever that means. And then I also have a shunt right there. And that's my autopilot, right? I just hide it under here, I'm not using it. And then we go down here, we can see the electrical stuff. I have a, a battery monitor. And you can see um, we're getting 
like a quarter amp right now, not very sunny. Uh, I'm also using my electricity to, to like charge things. So we're probably getting about an amp or two otherwise. And that's my solar system. That's all there is to it. Uh, the, the two panels are run in, in parallel. I think if you had them out maybe in a yard or something, it would make more sense to do them in series. But because the boom sometimes covers one, I think having them in parallel makes them more efficient. Someone asks, how many YouTube subscribers equals enough to live on while sailing? Um, I'm just going to say uh, 60,000, maybe 50,000. I don't know. I'm sure you could do it for less. Uh, someone asks, how much does a boat cost? Uh, they usually start around $100 and then uh, anywhere up to a few million probably. Um, Let's see, someone, what else do we ask we have? Someone asked that Snow Raven says, did I get a new autopilot? Old one went crazy, right? Yep, I still have my old one. Um, I, I thought about maybe getting the Raspberry Pi to make that one work again. Uh, Simrad decided they won't hook me up with a re replacement or fix it for me, so I had to buy a new one. I found one in, um, in Scotland at a local marine store for $500 which I thought was pretty expensive. I think the VAT makes things more expensive over here. Definitely in Norway, but it was uh, really... Uh, what did my, my drink go? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, what else we got as far as comments? I think someone asked where I am in Norway, out Hugsund. Um, hello, from India. Oh, we have another question from Luxor. How much does it cost to stay overnight in a marina? And that varies where you are. It seems to be like if you're in a town center, like a big harbor, um, the bigger a town, the, the more expensive the marina. If you're in like a small town, it's maybe like, uh, usually start around ten dollars a night um and then up to and then like a more expensive one would be more like thirty dollars a night although they can go even more to like a hundred dollars a night in some really crazy places uh this one here i think was like fifteen dollars for tonight and sometimes they have they have laundry sometimes they charge you more for power i think it was five dollars extra for power um laundry yeah it's like five dollars for a load of laundry usually around here and then the showers are like three or four dollars usually <laughs> someone asked if would i choose a cape dory for future passages i probably wouldn't buy uh another cape dory for f future passages but i'm gonna stick with this one for a while because it's been working pretty good um I, I think it'd be nice to get like a pilot house boat in the future. Someone asked where to nest David Simmons. We are going, or I am going and taking you guys with me. Uh, Stravenger, the, the next town, town south will be where I'm going and I'm meeting up with my friend and we'll sail together for a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Jason, for dinner. I do have some t-shirts right now. I need to do more on the merchandise front. Will I go into fjords? You know, I think I've, I passed the, the fjord already. Um, so maybe I will do that next year. It's kind of getting cold. Uh, maybe doing that. Uh, a whole lot more sailing up here. Um, Tesla Scoops how, asked, how do I do the night shifts? Uh, well, I try to also sleep during the day, take naps during the day. And if I'm near shore, yeah, I'll do the every, sleep every 10 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on how close things are. But what I, what you can do is you can use your chart plotter 
and you can measure how far you are away from like a boat or an island. And then, so if it's like 10 miles away and then maybe the fastest your boat can go is five knots, you could be like, well, I need to wake up in two, in two hours, I could hit that island. Even though if it's like not right in front of me, you never know because the boat might turn and go towards it. So I would say I need to wake up in less than two hours. So I'll set my alarm for like an hour and 45 minutes or so. And then once that goes off, I look around and I see what the next closest thing is. So that's what I'll do. Like I'll measure, it's like, for example, in the North Sea, there's oil rigs. So I see how far those are. And then that's how long I'll decide to sleep. And then if it's something that like, I'm definitely gonna run to land within an hour, I'll set like multiple alarms before I uh, uh, go to sleep because I could sleep through the alarm. I don't wanna do that. We got some recommendations to sail into the, to the fjords. So maybe, maybe we'll do that. Uh, I have a question about the heater. That would be the diesel heater over here. And I tried to use it actually yesterday and then it kind of, the, the housing kind of fell apart on it, but I got it put back together and it wasn't held together with any screws. So I put some screws in there to hold it together. So hopefully the, uh, the housing will last a little better. <laughs> Can I show my boat? Okay, I'll go outside and we'll, we'll walk around the boat just because we've been staring at my face for a long time. Someone asked if I saw oh, the weirdest thing I've seen at sea. You know, I, I saw the Loch Ness Monster and that, that'll be coming up in two episodes. It was not quite what I expected. Uh, uh, very, very ferocious. Um, we, I, I'll have to wait till, the, till that episode comes out to see it. Uh, but but keep stay tuned. The episode with the Loch Ness monster is is gonna be a good one, I think. So Perry asks, how much better is a twenty eight foot Cape Dory versus a twenty three foot boat I used to have? Uh, I would say it's it's five feet better, um, but uh, I can stand up in it, so that's better. And I have so much room to fit my paragliders in it. Uh, the only really downside is it's a little bit, um, stuff's a little further away. Like the, uh, like I used to be able to stand up and look out. Now I stand up and I have to climb up a ladder. That would be the kind of the downside, but it's much more comfortable than the little boat. And it's also a little harder to, to kind of push around, uh, by hand on the dock. Uh, my, someone asked how tall I am. I'm five foot 10. So I'm gonna put a jacket on real quick and I'll just walk around the boat. Cause there's nothing really to see in here. Woo. I got a question about if I got my standing rigging tuned before I crossed the Atlantic. And yes, I tuned my standing rigging. I just tightened up the shrouds and I looked at the mast until, um, until the mast was straight and I got nice and straight. That's what you do. So you just, you just, um, you'll, you'll have to move these, these wires and then you can turn this, but you hold some pliers on here and you can you get these nice and tight. And, um, what you want to do is you want to take about how much wind you're going to be sailing in. And then you'll go on like a, a beam reach or something. And then you look at the, the leeward shroud, the downwind shroud, and you'll see if it's sagging. And just kind of like get it tight enough so that it's uh, not, uh, not, not too, not, not sl slagging around. And because I, was, I knew I was going to be sailing a lot of wind, I, I tightened it up a little bit. And I gotta keep an eye on thing. It doesn't look like that the, the mass is compressing anything. So the rig is, I think it's tuned pretty well. Don't really know a whole bunch about that, but that's someone told me that's how you do it. Um, let's see. Anchor's been working pretty good. Uh, I've been using the spotlight a lot. Because I've been coming into harbors and not a lot lately. I really like having the spotlight on the front there. I recommend doing one of those. This uh, 
um, bowl work I built has been working fantastic. That's a really cool thing to add if you have a boat. It's really pretty easy. Uh, I got to thank my friend David and Oriental for helping me out with that. These chain plates, I mean, they're just absolute, absolutely beast. The little uh, pipe where the wiring goes in, it's keeping the water out pretty well. I ripped open the sail pack the other day on a crash jive, so I'll have to, I'll have to repair that guy. What else we got here? So where I glassed over here, it's pretty watertight, except for I need to re bed a few of the, uh, the dot cleats. This uh, railing is, is too flimsy. I'm, I think I might maybe get a welder and weld that up, make it maybe that make it a little stronger. I use this every once in a while, a little electric motor. Wind vane kind of needs to have, I think, the bearings rebuilt and stuff or replaced. Oop, I was covering it up. Uh, solar panels have been working good until I got to Norway and it's rainy all the time. I think I got lucky in uh, Scotland because it really was nice, nice and sunny a lot of the times. It hardly ever rained when I was there. I had a really long late summer. Coming back down because that's about all I can take. Whew, slippery. I'd like to put a new uh, some flooring material. This is really not so nice. It's slippery. Oh, I gotta wipe off my screen. Hopefully it doesn't make you guys go away. I got so much water on it. So all the rain, I've been going through like a iPhone charger cable every couple days now. I need to buy some more. Is the refrigerator still working? Well, it works, but I had to turn it off because not enough solar solar power to run it. Um, someone asked, how fast are the sails stretching, Matt Gartside? I don't know. They're probably pretty stretched out by now, but it doesn't. I'm not very picky about that. Uh, uh. Okay, question, do I have my satellite phone with me? I do have my satellite uh, messenger, yeah, devices with me. I canceled the Iridium Go because I only really need to use that when there is a when I'm doing offshore passages and I'm I'm basically within cell reception for the next uh, year. But once I cross back across the Atlantic, I will, I will probably renew that unless um, SpaceX comes out with something more competitive. Tasek, Tasek uh, asks, why do I fly the flag of the country I am in? And that's because uh, you're supposed to. You're supposed to fly the country of the flag you're in on your starboard uh, spreader, shroud, whatever. So that would be Norway. That's why I had the flag of Norway. Uh, makes sense, right? It's called a courtesy flag. Um, I see asked if I ever get seasick. Occasionally, but not, not, not um, too often. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Someone asked what I will be doing over the winter break, and I'm not quite sure yet. I might do a little Disney contract. I might um, do another sailing trip. Uh, I might, I don't know. I might visit back to the States. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, another question about the, the electrical setup. Uh, and the batteries, like specifically, they, um, they are AGM batteries, and the, the panels are from Renogy. Benjamin Fairhall asked if I'll sail the Pacific, and I plan to do that again, sail the Pacific again, but that might be a couple of years from now. We'll see. Do, 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 do. Print a new fridge. Do you ever get seasick? Condensation, yeah. Who is that? Hindu Uh Yeah, condensation is starting to become a problem. So I'm gonna start trying to run that the diesel heater uh, once a day at least. It's been getting kind of bad. Uh, I cleaned a bunch of mold off uh, or mildew off the the ceiling today. It did. It didn't get bad until just now though. It was wasn't doing too bad before. 
But yeah, condensation is getting bad now. Um, uh, he man asked if I'm going to sail to Denmark. I'm thinking about sailing to Denmark on my way to Sweden because I could just cross the that little stretch of water there. Do, 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 do. Uh, business consultant asks if we have any more leaks. How do I fix them at sea? Uh, yeah, the this is leaking. The um, the main sheet, the traveler is leaking. Should probably fix that at some point, but it's not a huge concern. Thank you, Peter McCullough, for the contribution and Sammy Smalls. Abby asked if I'm yearning for tropical islands, sun, and turquoise seas. Well, we actually have uh, some pretty turquoise uh, water around uh, Scotland. Uh, some pretty cool beaches up there. But yeah, I like I would like I would like to be in the tropical uh, islands right now versus around here. As cool as the sailing is, it's starting to get kind of cold for me. Uh, some questions about 3D printing. Hope I get to do some more 3D printing soon. Um, scrolling through the comments. There's so many. Sorry I'm missing a lot of them, guys. Okay, we got some more questions here. I'll wrap it up soon, probably. Uh, how long will I carry on the season? I think I'll probably get to my spot in Sweden in the next two or three weeks. Will I sail the Greek islands? Yes, next year, hopefully. Am I going to sail the Baltic Sea? I think, yeah, I'm considering sailing through the canal in Sweden to the Baltic and then going back around to the, the North Sea again. We'll see. Um, any plans taking a viewer as a first mate? No, I'm not planning on taking anyone else uh, um, sailing, uh, besides maybe my friends. Um, that's fun. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> my 3D print, that question is how the 3D printed, uh, louvers are holding up. These are working very good. The bug nets I need to reprint out of a ASA, but the... The shutters are working just great. <laughs> okay. Give a couple more minutes and I think I'll wrap it up. I'm not really seeing really any new questions. Favorite meals when sailing? The hummus and broccoli is my new favorite one. It's easy. And it works with my stomach. Uh, someone asked why iPhone cables are failing. It's because whenever the little bit of water gets on your phone, it goes straight into the charging point and it turns the cables green. Um, doesn't matter what brand I get. It happens with iPhone ones and Android ones and uh, just a fact of life, it seems to be. Uh, I haven't found a waterproof charging solution except for the wireless charging one, but it's too slow to, to work with the chart plotter. Uh, all right, I think, I think that's it. Thanks for watching the live stream in Norway. 
appreciate everybody who commented and contrib contributed. I'll do a next one in the next country, which will probably be either Denmark or Sweden.